If you've been looking for a house for the past couple months, you know that each home is getting multiple offers. So how do we make our offers stand out when we're one of maybe 10, 20 offers? Let me tell you. What's up ladies and gentlemen, I'm Brandon. I'm a real estate agent here in Los Angeles County. And if you would be so kind, hit the subscribe button down below. I'd really appreciate it and it helps grow the channel. So the real estate market is crazy right now. There's not a lot of homes for sale. So when you're shopping and you find that property that you love, you wanna make an offer on it, chances are, you're not the only one that's doing that. You're gonna be one of you know multiple offers, maybe five offers, maybe 10, maybe 20. So we gotta make sure your offer stands out. So thanks so much for checking out this video. I'm gonna tell you my tips to make sure you are submitting a strong offer that's gonna really make your offer shine over the others that have been submitted. When you are submitting an offer on a property, make sure you attach that beautiful face to that offer. Make sure you submit your offer with a picture of yourself and you attach that picture to a letter because we want to put a little bit of a personal touch on our offer to make it stand out. So you want to tell these sellers a little bit about yourself. Let them know who is the one that's going to be living in their home. Tell them where you're from, how many people are in your family, what you guys do, what you guys loved about the property, and what it is that you loved about the neighborhood. Think about this. You've been living in your home for 30 years. Now's the time for you to sell it. Maybe you wanna go out of state. Whatever your plans are to do, it's time for you to sell that property. Now you've become close with the neighbors. You have them over for Christmas. They've become like an extended part of your family. Wouldn't you wanna make sure that the new person that's going into your home would be a good fit for that community? These are the things that sellers look at. Now, mind you, not every seller thinks like that. Some people, you know what? They just want the property gone. They don't care who it goes to. Just give me my money. I'm out of here. I'm, 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 I'm hitting the road. But that's not the case for everyone. As I mentioned, some people, you know, they, they care a lot. They have a lot of emotional attachment to this property and they want to give that house to somebody who's going to love it and care for it the way that they have. So let's put a personal touch behind our offer to make it really stand out from the others. Next, this is a tip more for real estate agents. With our market being so competitive, there's a lot of great agents out there, but you know what? The listing agent may not know that you're a good agent. Submit a resume with that offer. That's right, a resume and I guarantee you will be the only agent that submits a resume with your offer. Let's tell this agent how long we've been selling real estate for. How many years have we been an agent? How many homes have we sold over our career? What are some of the great things that you pride yourself on? Is it negotiations? Is it communication? Is it the ability to figure out and find a problem and solve it before that problem comes about? Let that agent know that. Tell them about yourself. Tell them that you will get this home sold. Make sure this agent knows that you are a badass agent. Number three falls into your approval letter. Aside from our realtor's resume and aside from our letter putting a personal touch to our offer, let's talk about our pre-approval. So there's a lot of great lenders out there, but is it fair to say that there's also a couple bad lenders? I think so, I think we can both agree on that. What you wanna do is work with a reputable lender, someone who's known in the area, and someone who has proven time and time again that they can meet deadlines and get the deal done. So when we are submitting our pre-approval, we wanna step it up, right? So we're working with somebody who's reputable in the area, but aside from our pre-approval, we wanna submit our offer with what is called a DU approval as well, directly underwritten. I'm not gonna get into that because that's not my side of things. Just know that when you're speaking with your lender and you're getting ready to submit an offer, ask if you can have a DU. Directly underwritten, maybe called something different in your state, I'm here in California, that is how we refer to it, directly underwritten. Next is contingencies. I'm sure you knew I was gonna bring that up. We have our home inspection, our appraisal, and our loan. And I'm sure I'm not the first agent that you've heard bring up removing that appraisal contingency. But I may be the first agent to tell you not to do it. A lot of realtors are gonna tell you the market is so incredibly fierce, let's go ahead and remove our appraisal contingency. That is not the way to necessarily play this, especially right off the bat. We don't need to be swinging for the fences as soon as we submit our offer. The sellers, if they like your offer, they're gonna try and work something out with you. Instead of removing those, those contingencies right off the bat, what I like to do is shorten them. 
What's important to sellers is the essence of time and people moving in a timely fashion. So shortening those contingencies, we're getting all questions, all potential problems worked out as fast as we possibly can when escrow is open. That doesn't mean you have to remove that appraisal contingency and just you know help it appraises and there's not gonna be any problems. You don't need to do that. I've been selling property for several, several years now. I've probably only removed that appraisal contingency two or three times in my career. And I'll tell you multiple times I've beaten out offers with an appraisal contingency when I was competing against offers that had removed that contingency. It's not a make or break situation. And if it is, the sellers are gonna send that to you in a form of a counter. Review that counter with your agent. That agent should be someone you trust and is working on your behalf. They will give you their uh, input as to what they think is the best move for you to do. I want to give another tip for the agents. When you are submitting an offer, nothing makes me more annoyed when I get a random offer in my email that says, please see attached. I've never spoken to you before. Heck, I don't know if this is a blind offer or not. I don't know anything about the clients and I just see, I don't know anything about you either. All I just see is uh, please see attached and there's an offer attached to it. Don't do that. Call these agents. Say, hey, my name is Brandon. I'm with 123 Real Estate and I just showed your property here. Hey, aside from price, what are your sellers looking for in an offer? You see how I said that? Aside from price, what are your clients looking for? Because price is not only the determining factor. So they, these sellers, it may be contingent sell for them. Maybe they need to purchase another property and you address that right up front with your offer. So we are getting more information up front so we can submit more of an offer that's exactly what the sellers are looking for. So just because you submit the highest price, that doesn't mean your offer is the best. Maybe these sellers need a rent back. Hey, you know what? Maybe they're not leaving the appliances. Maybe they're not willing to do certain things to the house. Maybe there's just there's just a few things that they need a buyer to be okay with, and it's not just about price. I can tell you again, I've beaten out offers that were higher than mine simply because maybe the seller needed a an extended escrow or a 10-day rent back of the property, and I had that in my offer. My offer was just the cleanest up front, and they said, let's just go with this guy. He's got it done. He's got it down. He knows what he's doing, and his offer is clean and ready to go. So you, the agent, do more legwork up front. Call these listing agents for these properties that you're submitting offers on. Tell them about yourself. Tell them that you're an amazing agent. Find out what their clients are looking for other than price. So when you are submitting your offer, it is exactly what the sellers are looking for. And when you are submitting your offer, type up a nice email with it. Not please see attached. Type up a nice paragraph of who you are, you know, what your clients liked about the property, and then summarize, put together the highlights of your offer so they can see before they even open up the attachment what it is that you're offering. Tell them about it up front. Just be up front with your offer and be uh, and, and send over something nice explaining who it is that you are. Okay, so if you've listened this far and you've taken the advice that I've given you, I already know that offer is going to be looking badass when you submit it, but let me give you another piece of information and a little bit of advice. When you're looking at property, time is of the essence. You are not the only person that has seen that property. So when you find this property and you really, really like it, act fast. Now, they may be saying, hey, we're not reviewing offers for four more days. Just submit your offer on that date. Don't do that. Get your offer in right away. Who's to say that seller doesn't change their mind? You submit an offer that's just super clean. They see your letter. They see that beautiful picture of you and your family or just yourself, your, you and your kids. And they say, I don't want to wait anymore. I want to, I, I like these people. I like, there's something about them. I want to entertain this offer. Hey, can we, uh, can we respond to it? See if we can just lock this up tonight. You are going to wait till Friday when there were six other offers, but you got in there right away. You were the first offer and you know what? They liked it and they said, let's just, let's just pull the trigger now and do it. 
Imagine that. And hey, I bet you got it at a better price too because they didn't counter six other people. I mean, how nice would that be? You're thinking you're not gonna hear an answer for five more days, but instead you hear back in a couple hours. Would, uh, would you not be happy about that? And I got one last tip for you guys, and this one is the biggest one, the most important one before all the other ones I have given you. So listen closely to what I am about to say. You're gonna go through a period of time of doubt. If you've submitted five offers and they've all been rejected, you're probably thinking about giving up. Don't do that. I'm telling you, when it's the right property, it will come naturally. Do not force something to happen. Do not get yourself in a position where you're bidding up higher than you'd like to, than, than you feel comfortable with. Okay, if it's not meant to be, it's not meant to be. That right property is gonna come along. You've been searching for months. You've gotten beat out on 12 other properties and you're so frustrated. Then one more property comes along and you said, I, was, I said I was giving up. I wasn't looking at any more properties, but this one's the one. This is it. You go look at it. You submit an offer and they don't even wanna look at, wait, wait for other offers to come in. Yours just comes in and they say, let's do it. If it's meant to be, I guarantee you it will be easy. So be patient, the right property will come along and when it does, it will fall right into your lap. Trust me. That's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you haven't done so already, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. Leave me a like, leave me a comment. I'd really appreciate any feedback you guys have for me. Again, my name is Brandon Peters and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.